Hello, I'm Dave and as regular viewers will have already spotted, I'm on my own. No Logan or Fiverr this week. That's because uh, it was a slightly unusual video for the channel today. Um, I'm not going to be going for a walk and I'm not going to be in the countryside as such. So if you're expecting a countryside walk, sorry about that. But don't worry, there will be one coming out next Friday. Now there's something special about today's location and um, that's always fascinated me that I've always wanted to explore. I'll explain shortly. But I'd better tell you where I am. Well, I'm in the town of Fordingbridge in Hampshire. It's about 10 miles south of Salisbury and situated on the edge of the New Forest. And indeed, uh, the town is often referred to as being the northern gateway to the forest. It's a former market town and two of its main features are the great bridge that crosses the river Avon, that's uh, where the town gets its name from, and uh, St Mary's Church, uh, which was rebuilt by the Normans in 1150. Now we're not really going to be looking around the town of Fordingbridge in great detail as such today, but if you are interested, do check out the excellent book, The History of Fordingbridge by Anthony Light and Gerald Ponting. But what I am going to be doing today is searching for World War II pillboxes, and quite a lot of them. Now over the years as I've uh, come through Fordingbridge, um, I've noticed firstly one pillbox, and then another, and then another. And so I thought I'd do a little bit of research. Indeed, I looked up the Defence of Britain database, and on their online map it shows that in World War II, there were an incredible 15 pillboxes in the town and surrounding area. So a question that I asked myself is, well, why were there so many pillboxes? I mean, Fordingbridge today and the surrounding areas has got a population of roughly 6,000 or so. Back in the time of the Second World War, it would have been three, three and a half thousand. And there was nothing of any great significance here. I mean, it's a lovely town. Why such um, significant defences? Well, for that, I need to go back on a little bit of history. Immediately after the evacuation at Dunkirk in 1940, the authorities decided to build a static system of defensive lines around Britain designed to compartmentalise the country and delay any invaders, the Germans, uh, long enough for mobile forces to counter-attack. And over 50 of these lines were constructed across the country. Now the River Avon between Ringwood and Salisbury became part of one of these stop lines, the aim being to deny east-west movement by the Germans. Now both Salisbury in the north and Fordingbridge to the south were fortified and the three main crossing points over the Avon were defended to varying degrees. And the Avon Valley would certainly have presented a formidable obstacle to any mechanised force as, in addition to the primary and secondary river channels, the valley is largely water meadows, much dissected by ditches used to flood the pasture land. And some of those uh, ditches would have been significant obstacles themselves. And so with the natural barrier of the River Avon, and the A338 uh, trunk road that sort of heads north-south by the town, it became an obvious place for a defence and Fordingbridge became what was known as an anti-tank island. Now anti-tank islands were defensive points usually centred on major road junctions, bridges or natural features that, uh, if obstructed, would delay the advance of the Germans, not so much to stop them completely but to hold them up to give time for reinforcements to arrive. And sites were usually made up of bunkers, ditches, roadblocks, trenches and explosives in bridges. And the anti-tank island at Fordingbridge clearly centred on the River Avon crossing. Now the Defence of Britain database actually lists 30 individual elements of the Fordingbridge anti-tank island. There was a fortified house, a mined bridge, 15 pillboxes, as I've mentioned already, eight roadblocks, four section posts, which are basically reinforced trenches, and one unspecified defence work. There were also possibly five rail blocks along the railway line that passed through the western side of the town. 
Now of those 15 pillboxes, four were removed almost immediately after the war. But of the other 11, well, let's see how many we can actually find. We're going to have a little bit of fun here. Um, some of them may well be on private land, which means we won't be able to see them at all. Some of them we probably only be able to see from a distance, but uh, I'm confident that uh, we'll be able to see a few of them. Let's go. Well, we'll start off our exploration um, just about a mile south of Fording Bridge at the little hamlet of Bicton. And just behind me here is our first pillbox. Now this is uh, about as close as I'm going to be able to get to it because it is actually on private land and it overlooks the River Avon. And it's actually an obvious place to have one because uh, well, if you look at an old map, although there's no bridge here, there was once uh, an important road or crossing point uh, over the Avon itself. Now this is a, a Type 26 pillbox that's uh, been built into the side of uh, the bank. Um, it's not a very common type. There's only about 140 of them recorded as still being in existence in the UK today. But uh, it's basically a, a simple square shape, 10 foot by 10 foot. And uh, there's a door on one side and usually um, embrasures or basically open firing holes on the other three sides. But, well, we can see a little bit of it anyway. And apparently there was a, a second pillbox further to the south, but that's uh, long since gone. Okay, pillbox number two. And I'm on the sort of southwestern edge of Fording Bridge, a uh, place called, I think it's Lower Lane or Midgham Lane. Anyway, it's hidden just behind me here. Just behind the, the trees there, and looks as though someone's dumped some rubbish, but oh, this one's in quite good condition as well. It's a Type 22, so yeah, it's a hexagonal in shape. I guess it must have been defending attack from the west, although we are some way from the, the River Avon, um, the main road and the railway. I, don't know, I can't really see why it was here, but well, obviously this is the entrance, so it's almost pointing in a, um, a southwesterly direction. Anyway, Number two has been ticked off. I'm well, continuing uh, northwards, still on the western side of Fording Bridge. I'm at a place called Ashford Road. Um, and behind me is where, well, there would have been a pillbox in the past. I'm pretty sure it's long since been removed. It would have been a Type 26, which would have been a square one. It's uh, listed as condition unknown in, in the records and uh, was built on a brick base and dug into a, a bank but well, I was hoping perhaps there might have been some evidence of the, the base but I've looked up and down the road on the right hand side and I can't see anything but certainly it was an obvious place for a pillbox uh, defending uh, Ashford Water to the north that's a, a tributary to the River Avon uh, also you had the old railway line which was uh, to the north. Um, Fording Bridge had a, a railway station, it was opened in 1866 but the line closed in the 1960s. Well my journey has now taken me to Fording Bridge itself so we're at the southern end of town, a place called uh, Frog Lane. Now I've been walking up and down this lane for about 10 minutes and I'd virtually given up on finding this pillbox but I have found it. It's not easy to see in fact, it's hidden behind uh, this rhododendron bush. Now, I might just have to poke through for you to actually see something. It's definitely there. It, uh, well, let's see what we can do. I'll try with the GoPro first and then I'll maybe see if I can take a photograph. But can you see it there? I can see one of the little windows. It's a Type 22 hexagon shape pillbox, the second most common type of pillbox seen. There's about uh, 1,347 still being recorded uh, as existing in the UK. There's about 6,500 pillboxes in total still left. The most common is the uh, Type 24 with uh, about 1,724 being recorded as uh, still around. But, as I say, can you see in there? It's uh, uh, concrete wall, single storey, about a, a foot thick and each wall would have had a single 
embrasure, except obviously the side facing away from the expected direction of attack. And if I gently pull back, <laughs> so I say this is um, Frog Lane, and again, an obvious place because, well, behind the hedge on that side, not too far away, is, uh, is the River Avon. Ha ha, pillbox number five, is it? Again, another well hidden one, right on the edge of a, an estate, uh, well, sort of south of Station Road. And this is a, a Type 22, and it would have defended Ashford Water to the south, but um, oh, covered in ivy. Looks like there's an embrasure down at the bottom there. And you can just about see well, the roof of it covered in uh, covered in leaves. But there you go, gradually being uh, overcome by nature, but still here. We're just south of the church. I was hoping to find a bit of remaining concrete of um, a section post, but I'm afraid. Where I think it is, is on private land behind me here, which is a shame because uh, apparently it's a very rare type of defence structure, a sort of L-shaped with brick walls and each arm of the L has got something like, well, a 25 foot by 10 foot chamber with six embrasures. But I think, I say it's just through there, we've got the Avon Valley path to my right, which is public access, but I think the structure is, um, just through that field there and the River Avon's just on the other side. So again, an obvious place for, a, for such a structure. But sadly, we're not gonna be able to see that one. Well, of course, a lot of the evidence for roadblocks and anti-tank defences in the roads have long since gone. Over the years, roads will have been <laughs> resurfaced. But uh, just here in Shaftesbury Street, opposite the, uh, the cinema, I think there's still some evidence. And here we go, just in front of me, you can probably see in the road some markings and certainly the patterns of what might have been an anti-tank rail system. Well, according to the database, uh, just uh, north of the church, uh, at this little junction here, there was an anti-tank uh, block. No evidence in the road these days, but just a little bit further north, just before Knowles Bridge, is this object here. Now, I might be totally wrong, of course, but I wonder if this originates from the Second World War and, if necessary, could have been dragged into the centre of the road just to block the, uh, the road over the, um, the Little River. Maybe. Well, I've now made my way, well, I'm quite close to uh, the Fording Bridge surgery, and according to the database, well, just behind me in a little wooded area, there was a, a pillbox, but uh, it's all on private land, so I'm not going to be able to do any exploring. Um, the database is actually unclear as to even what type it was or any details, so I shall just mention it. Well, in front of me here is the Great Bridge at Fording Bridge itself. Now, there was a bridge here, well, long before 1086, as... Uh, Basically, that's how the town got its name. But a bridge was mentioned in 1252 and uh, certainly a grant made in 1385 that may have led to the building of the existing seven arches. The present bridge was widened in 1841 and a footpath added in 1901. But uh, the bridge was certainly defended. There would have been a couple of um, road blocks at either end. And uh, also, uh, if you look closely under the arches, there are some uh, holes there where um, they would have put explosives uh, in case they ever needed to uh, destroy the bridge. Well, folks, just about to come across pillbox number seven, I think it is. And this is the best so far, just behind me here. Isn't that brilliant? So I'm in a place called Marl Lane, so it's on the sort of western side of Fording Bridge and uh, it's a Type 22 and this one's in very good condition as you can see. It's right by a public footpath so you can get quite, uh, 
quite close up to it. And there's the, what was the entrance down there in hexagonal in shape. And the reason it's pointing in that direction is that literally about, what, 50 yards further along is the old railway line. So again, excellent uh, defensive position here. But um, lovely to see it, uh, I say, still in such great condition and not too badly damaged. And as far as I can see, no graffiti on the outside. Brilliant. Well, I'm continuing to make my way through Fording Bridge. And I'm just at a place where there's a stream called Sweatford's Water that uh, is just behind me here, sort of on the western side of the town. Now we're going to have to use our imagination a little bit here because the next thing we're going to look at we're not actually going to be able to see. Um, there's a house just on the other side of the stream, I think it's called Parsonage Cottage. Anyway, during the Second World War it uh, became a, a fortified house, basically there was a pillbox built into the side of it. Um, these days I believe it, all the embrasures have been built up and um, it's used as a larder but uh, I think I can only see the top of it anyway. Let's uh, crack on with our exploration. Well, I wasn't expecting this to be easy, but uh, well, I've come across a little bit of a challenge now, looking for the next pillbox. I'm quite close to, uh, I think it's called Parsonage Park Drive, close to Sweatford's Water. And, well, roughly where I'm standing now, which is right in a bed of thick singing nettles and brambles, should be a Type 22 pillbox, but, well, I can't see anything at the moment. Quite frankly, I'm not going to try to make my way through that. I mean, it's a shame because I was really, apparently it's got an unusual uh, internal T-shaped blast wall and uh, very thick walls. But, well, I'll be blowed if I can find it. Let's uh, kick on to the next one. Oh, yes, look at this one. This is brilliant. This is at, uh, we're just off Penny's Lane uh, on the west side of a footpath, the sort of northern end of town. That's a, a Type 22 again, it's a hexagonal, and it would have been uh, defending the, well it's on the eastern side of uh, Sweatford's Water. A little bit of uh, graffiti, but, um, and the embrasures, well, looks so like they've been semi-bricked up as well. Apart from that, it's um, in pretty good nick. Well, I'm now at the northern end of Fording Bridge and you can probably hear the very busy uh, A338 uh, that's just by me here. Now, just by, uh, well, Burgate uh, School is just on the other side. And there was a pillbox just here, presumably uh, defending the main road, but it was uh, removed pretty much straight after uh, the war ended. Uh, another failure on uh, the next one, I'm afraid. There is a, a pillbox uh, in some woods just behind me where the old Surma Valley um, restaurant used to be. It's now closed. It looks like there's some sort of building work going on, a building development, so I can't go in. And there's lots of private and keep out signs. I think it is still there. It's a, a Type 22. But uh, we're not going to be able to see it. We've now come to the last uh, couple of pillboxes on the tour. Now, this is very important. I'm actually on private land um, on a farm, but I've just spoken to uh, one of the guys that works here and he's given me special permission to have a look, which is brilliant. So the first one is just behind me here. It's a Type 22. And as you can see, it's in very good condition. And this one is, well, right by the River Avon, so clearly that's its uh, number one reason for, for being here. But, uh, lovely that it's uh, still well preserved. So just looking at uh, the previous pillbox, we can just see in the far corner of the field there. And then if I slowly pan round across uh, the field, and this is our final pillbox of the tour. But don't switch off yet because I've got a bonus for you later on. So this one here again it's uh, another 
Type 22. Um, although uh, more covered in brambles and uh, vegetation, but yeah, still fairly good condition. And this one, well, it's a little bit further away from the Avon, but it, it probably would have been uh, defending a, well, there's a fairly significant channel just on the other side. Well, just before we uh, finish the video, a little bonus for you. I've driven uh, about a mile or so north of Fording Bridge to the little village of Bremer, where there are a couple of uh, buildings uh, that were part of the uh, stop line in the war. And the first one is just by me here next to the mill. You might not be able to see from the GoPro, I might have to put a photograph up, but it's a Type 26 modified. It's been built into the side of the, uh, the mill, designed very much to blend in. It's a uh, square and the entrance apparently is protected by a blast wall and the roof would probably have been camouflaged with a, a pitched roof. But uh, there's something much easier to see just round the corner. Well, it really is a, a beautiful mill, isn't it? And just to the uh, east of it is well, what they called a defended building. It's a, a gun emplacement constructed within a farm building, converted from a former carriage shed. And, uh, well, it would have been defending the bridge next to it, crossing the River Avon. And there would have been a roadblock on the bridge as well. Well, you can see a better view of that uh, defended building, actually, from the, from the bridge. Isn't the River Avon looking quite beautiful today? And I was reading that there is a, a third uh, structure on the eastern bank of the, the river, a modified 26, but uh, it's on private land and uh, it's, it's all overgrown, I believe. Um, but uh, I think the entrance of it was to the northeast, protected by a blast wall, and the external concrete had actually been grooved to simulate the pointing of bricks and then was painted red. There's a lovely, uh, I think it's an egret out there. I can't see, I'll have to get my camera out. Well, folks, that's the end of that uh, whistle-stop uh, tour of the Second World War defences of uh, Fording Bridge. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give me a, a thumbs up and a like and to leave a comment. I thought I'd do the end scene here next to the great bridge at Fording Bridge and some rather noisy ducks. <laughs> well I look forward to seeing you again uh, next week back with Logan back out into the countryside for another countryside walk. So until we meet again thanks for watching and cheerio.